In this video series, I'm taking a look back at some of my photographs and travels over the years and sharing the stories that went into creating my artwork. Please take the time to subscribe to my channel now so that you don't miss anything. Thank you and enjoy. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching. This is part two of my Norway travel from 2014 that I'm sharing with you guys. So uh, hopefully you watched the first video already. If you didn't, they don't really need to be watched sequentially. So if you missed the first one, you can watch this one and then go back to the first one if you're interested in uh, hearing about the uh, beginning part of this story of getting to Norway. So at this time, um, I was up in Lofoten. I had rented this, uh, what's called a Rorbu. And Aurorbu is seasonal housing for fishermen, uh, or it used to be seasonal housing for fishermen up in Norway. Uh, they were these really kind of primitive wooden buildings that would, you know, be built right next to the water so you could kind of pull your fishing boat up to it. But now a lot of these Aurorbus have been converted for tourist housing. Um, and I thought it would be really cool to stay in one of those instead of staying in a hotel. And in Lofoten, there really aren't a ton of, like, chain hotels or anything around, so kind of the, the best option in this area is to stay in one of these Orbus. As I mentioned in my first video about Norway, uh, Norway's pretty expensive. Coming from the U.S. even, uh, I found Norway to be very expensive. The Rorbu that I reserved was one of the least expensive ones I could find. It also, you know, was supposed to have a kitchen so I could make my own food, which I like to do when I travel. So fly into Lofoten, get a rental car, drive out to this Rorbu I'm staying at, go to the front desk check-in area, I guess you can call it, which was just a, it was inside of a restaurant where you get your key for your Rorbu. They had a, a restaurant on site. Go in, tell them who I am, get this key, walk down the dock there, put the key in the, the door, open the door up and walk in. And it is the tiniest space that I've ever seen. There was a little doorway, a wooden bench with some padding on it that was the bed, had some pillows on it, a little electric space heater because these Rorbus, um aren't really insulated. So you need heat in there. A little tiny bathroom with a little tiny like stand-up shower in there. So really, really small. And I thought to myself, well, I knew Norway was really expensive, but the amount that I paid for this place to basically be the size of a closet with a bathroom was really outrageous. But I thought to myself, I'm here for a week and I'm not gonna be spending much time in the room anyway. So what, what does it matter? I just need to sleep here and I need to shower here. At this point, I had, I had forgotten that there was even supposed to be a kitchen. And this room was so small that I had to keep my luggage in between the bed and the bathroom because there was really no other place to put it. Uh, I get up the next day, went and scouted some locations, came back, got something to eat at the restaurant again, then, then that night went to sleep again. I don't ever unpack my luggage when I'm traveling, even if I'm going to be somewhere for a while. I almost never put my clothing in any kind of furniture. Not that there was actually any furniture or any dressers or anything in this Rorbu anyway. One time years ago, I had put my clothing in a dresser and then uh, when I left, I never repacked my suitcase. And then a week or two later realized I left almost all of my clothing at this place in Vermont. So s since then I never really unpack any clothing when I travel. So go to sleep that night, get up in the middle of the night and I have to go to the bathroom. So I get up, get out of bed and trip over my suitcase and I went flying. Like, and I was like, all right, that's it. I never put my suitcase or clothing away when I travel, but I have to put this suitcase in a closet so I don't trip over it and, and fall and break my neck or break my arm one night. Close up my suitcase, go over and I open this door, expecting it to be the closet. And I open the door and the doorway opens into an entire huge cabin. There's a kitchen, there's a living room, there's a dining area, there's a little like study library area. There's an upstairs loft area with more beds. You could have slept eight to 10 people in this place comfortably. And where I had been sleeping was the entranceway and the mudroom that you're supposed to walk into, take all your gross fishing gear off, and then continue into the main part of the Rorbu. Surely you did not spend entire vacation in sitting room. Huh? <laughs> My lord. 
and because I thought this door was a closet, I had never bothered to open it because I don't use closets when I travel. And I felt so stupid <laughs> when I opened that door and saw how big this place was. And I felt exactly like Hank Hill in this moment. And it also made me feel a little bit better about uh, paying so much money because it, it, was a, it was much bigger than just one teeny tiny like closet sized room. So anyway, my, my travels around Lofoten, I found this really pretty area in Hamnoi and there was a, a Vorbu which is painted like these bright red colors and they're right on the edge of the Norwegian sea there which is this really like deep royal blue and there are some beautiful mountains behind it. I had driven past this particular Rorbu several times and always thought like it's in like the most picturesque place and it would make like a, a really great kite aerial photograph there. So watch the weather and then one day when the wind was supposed to be right and the sun was pointed in the, in the right direction, went out there and flew my kite over this uh, Rorbu and got the camera not too high. This is a, a lower altitude photograph and uh, photographed this Rorbu that's right on the edge of the Norwegian sea there. And again, this has uh, been a really popular photograph from me that people seem to really like and I'm personally very happy with. So I was really excited to get that. I'd photographed a few other places in Lofoten on this trip. I've never released any of them. I never published any of them. Uh, I'm really particular about the pieces that I actually release and put out in editions. So if something isn't perfect in my mind, then I would rather release nothing then release a photograph that I feel isn't really perfect or exactly what I want. A lot of times I will go back to the same location and photograph several times until I get it exactly right. So one day I'd like to travel back to Lofoten and uh, you know do some more work up there. So that's the Rorbu story. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and maybe found it humorous a little bit. If you are enjoying this series, I would really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be putting out more of these videos talking about my travels and the photographs that I've taken, kind of the story behind the photograph. So if you would, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or, or comments about this, uh, again, leave me a comment below, ask your question, I'll uh, get, get back to you. If you enjoyed this format, let me know. If you don't enjoy the format, let me know a way that maybe I can improve these videos so that they're more interesting to you, and enjoy. Thanks a lot.